Afternoon, Ansh. Hey. Uh, you spoke on Sunday about the excellent record you have in, in your second season in terms of delivering trophies. Therefore, how significant do you see this game and this competition, the quickest route to winning something? Uh, yeah, look, every every game's an opportunity for us to uh, you know, get on that sort of uh, road to, to success. So, but, um, yeah, obviously, cup competitions, there's... Uh, there's kind of a definite uh, timeline there where you know that uh, we've got to win tomorrow to progress. So uh, focus is there. When you look to deliver success at a club, how much do you as a manager who, who's won things rely on the players in your squad who have also delivered, the likes of Christian Romero, Rodrigo Bentanka, who know what it's like to win big trophies? Um, yeah, it's, it, it helps, I guess, because that, you know, it's, it's I guess, uh, that experience of... Winning, uh, I think I've said before, there's there's always uh, sort of common factors whenever you you kind of look across any kind of successful endeavour. Um, certainly around you know um, coherence and 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 belief in in each other and, and in something and making sure you're disciplined in in you know the the kind of the way you you behave and, and approach things. I think there's a consistency there. It doesn't matter who you're playing for, what who you're representing. Uh, uh, there's always those kind of common factors and guys who have experienced that before. You know, hopefully they can sort of relate that to the guys who, who haven't had that experience. When you come to, to thinking about the team that you might select tomorrow, how difficult is the balance between results-wise not been great so far this season and you need to build a little bit of momentum but you're in the middle of a run of seven games in 21 days and you can't, I'm assuming, flog the same guys for all of those seven matches. No, I think the main thing is we, we want to win tomorrow night so you're kind of looking at um, you know, which players are in the best position to do that and so you do take into account there's a game a couple of days ago so we're looking at guys who uh, see how they've recovered from that got some guys who haven't played much who you know are ready to play and contribute so it's always about trying to put a team out there you think is going to win uh, and, and get the job done and that's what we'll do tomorrow just a final one then on the team that you might select is is Eve Basuma in contention no no uh, Bis um, yeah still um, not where we want him to be so um, you know hopefully um, still a chance for the weekend thanks Ange Nizar please Hi, and I wanted to ask you about um, Christian Romero. There was a there was a retweet of an Argentinian journalist tweet where he suggested that um, you know he he didn't get his travel uh, paid for in a private jet back to the UK after international duty, and maybe that left him tired or ill, uh, depending on how you look at the translation. But I just wondered, had you seen that? Ha, ha, have you uh, commented on that? Have you spoken to him about that, or, or just to clarify the situation in general? No, it was mentioned to me, but yeah, no, it wasn't mentioned to me before the game. But you knew nothing about it. All the players got back um, Thursday. We had a Sunday game. Um, no one reported anything other than uh, the usual checks from people from uh, coming back from his national duty. So uh, prior to the game, no one said anything. Uh, confirm that Christian was uh, fine and well to play the game. There was n there was no risk uh, taken with a sort of illness or anything like that. As I said, there was nothing before the game that was mentioned to me. And I read a FIFA Pro report about players and uh, the travel they've done and, and Christian was actually top of, of all players in world football last year. I was wondering if, if you're aware of that and is that just a challenge that maybe some of the South American players and, and maybe some of the Asian players have to deal with and, and do you have a sort of sympathy with the guys over that sort of issue? Yeah, but that's not a new thing. That's been going on for quite a while. I'm not sure why it's relevant today. I think that's been going on for, for a very long time. I've got Mila Yednak asking him many kilometres he did whilst trying to have a career over here in Europe. So it's not great. It's not ideal. Um, it's a price sometimes you have to pay for international uh, fixtures. Um, at the same time, I think it's it's right that, you know, particularly the players are really concerned about the amount of games they're playing. I think that's really relevant. But the tyranny of distance has always been there. I don't, you know, I think starting to clutch a bit if we're using that as something for the weekend that had nothing to do with our game on the weekend but um, as an overall I agree I think the international calendar is really putting you know um, some strenuous demands on, on footballers to perform at the highest level and um, and we know that you know them representing the country is really important to them uh, we know the distances involved in that particularly like I said for South American Asian players and uh, you know it's something we you know we kind of need to you know, have a look at from a holistic point of view, but 
not really relevant to the current situation. Could I just ask a follow-up on that? Um, sort of seeing Alison and Akanji, they've come out and said that they're playing too many games and, and they're sort of starting to feel it. Do you feel that among among the players you work with and, and are the new competitions the problem? I mean, I, again, not specifically here. I, I definitely think that we're, we're, we're pushing the boundaries of what, you know, we're asking of players today if we want, you know, sort of elite performances across the board and, and, and players, you know, being available um, constantly that, um, you know, I think we're, we're bursting out the seams in terms of how much we requirements we put on players, absolutely. Ali. Hi, Ange. Um, your brand of football is kind of this relentless, like, we never stop kind of attacking football. Um, are there any points, maybe especially on, on Sunday, and maybe particularly after they scored, that you, there was any frustration that it seemed to slow down, it seemed a bit more hesitant in those that final third area? Um, not specifically then. I, 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 I think it was before that. I thought, you know, it was quite obvious that, that Arsenal were, were we're quite keen to slow the game down. I just thought we we did at times as well, unnecessarily in the first half. Uh, a couple of times from goal kicks where we just took ages to get started, and you know we, we kind of allowed them to to get the break they wanted. And um, so yeah, I mean at the end of the game, it's, it's always going to be difficult because they're really good at sitting deep and they sit deep really well. They've got a really strong you know uh, presence in inside their defensive box. So you know going goal behind was always going to make it difficult for them for us to open them up. Um, or generate any sort of tempo in the game. So, um, yeah, when we, we kind of looked at the game, I thought there was missed opportunities, uh, particularly in the first half when we were on top, to really you know, continue to be relentless because there was. There was a lot of sort of slowing down of the game, you know, when they were in control of it. And, you know, when we slowed it down, we kind of contributed to it as well. And uh, Guillermo Vicari after the game was getting a little bit of criticism for the goal. Maybe suggestions he could have been stronger and come out. Is that something you see any validity in? I think, um, yeah, there's a collective responsibility there within something like that. Um, you know, it's, as I said, after the game, it's a moment where we switched off in, in many respects, um, you know, from our focus, which had been really good up until that point, And, you know, we got punished for it. And uh, some of the younger players maybe uh, working towards their chance, Archie Gray, Lucas Bergvall, obviously new arrivals, maybe even someone like Mikey Moore. Could we see any of these players tomorrow? You can see them, yeah. Um, <laughs> they might even be on the pitch, mate. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're ready to play and um, you know, we're keen to get them some game time. That's why we brought them to the club because they're, they're training really well. You know, The games haven't gone the way we want in terms of you know, giving them some more exposure. But we always knew that you know this was the period where it starts, not just between now and next international break, but post that really probably till the end of January, we're going to have a really busy schedule and um, they're going to play a big part in that. So, you know, you know, guys like those two, those three you mentioned and, you know, Wilson, who hasn't played a lot so far, Pape, um, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, Radu, you know, we, we, we're keen to get them playing because we're going to need them. Okay, finish this section with Ian, please. <coughs> I am trying. A good one. Um, in terms of last season, I know you were, you mentioned a few times about how you were frustrated that you'd gone out in the first round of Fulham because later on in the year you didn't have the number of games you wanted your team to have. Will that be, as well as winning a trophy, will that be a a, a big sort of thing you want to impress upon your team tomorrow? That this is a chance for the, some of the players to play on a more regular basis this season? Yeah, I mean, we didn't have Europe last year either. So, you know, it was, like I said, it was an unusual year last year where, you know, for a club our size and, you know, with the squad we carry that we didn't really have the volume of games and, and going out in the first round of the, the Carabao Cup didn't didn't help that. But, um, look, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to play. It's an opportunity to impress. It's an opportunity to for us to, to advance in a competition. All those kind of things are, are still true and that's what we're focusing on. And I know you reiterated at the weekend that the second year is a year where you win a trophy. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, I, I just stated a fact and it seems like, am I supposed to just lie or just say no, no, I, I it thought... never happened? But no, it's just, it's, it, it, it's confusing to me that people are making a big deal out of something. I'm not supposed to, ha sure how I'm supposed to answer something that is true. Like, if I don't win it in the second year this year and I come out next year and say, well, I always win it. Well, no, actually, it's not true. But I've just said something that's true. And it seems like it's upset a lot of people for some reason. I think it's because it's unusual that we see a manager who... Saying something true. No, no. <laughs> not, well, <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Somebody said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can say that. I couldn't possibly yeah, comment. No. But it's, it's quite bashful about their team's prospects. But, but it's... Uh, do you really think I'm 
it's me sort of being boasting or like how am I supposed to answer something that's true is it to say well actually no it wasn't that important they were easy competitions and they don't mean anything and I I, I mean if if you've achieved something aren't you supposed to say yes I have and that's what I hope to do again I'm not really sure like why people misconstrue it as me trying to boast about something I've answered a question which I think somebody else brought up here anyway which before that, um, which is true, and that's always happened. And my plan is for it to happen again this year. And if it doesn't happen, then I can't answer that question in the same way next year. I can say mostly, not always. Well, just following on from that, does because opening four games, you easily could be sitting there and won all four. Mm. The way your team have played, domination against Leicester, and you, but they haven't. Mm. So, in a sense, do, does the winning mentality? How do, how do you marriage the winning mentality with? your philosophy going forward so you win more yeah well just it's just a like i said it's a consistency and and a sort of belief in what we're doing and um you know there's i've said before it's 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 not an easy process it 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 um you know at times can feel pretty um disheartening when things don't happen smoothly but i've always believed in certain things to be true one is that if you keep playing well the, the results will come um but you just can't do that and expect it to happen. You know, there's still elements in our game that we need to improve on. And, you know, I think when you look at the four games, I think that you could summarise all four games in a very similar way of us, you know, outperforming the opposition, but not not um, taking the critical moments in our favour. And you pay a price for that. But that doesn't mean you, you, you need to change your approach. If anything, you just need to keep doing what you're doing and make sure that in those critical moments we um you know we take advantage of it